Hey y'all, Darla here with Growing Tropical. I hope everybody's doing well. It is a gorgeous February afternoon here in South Florida. Temperature's about 70, 72 degrees, and it is a great, great day to plant some bougainvillea. You guys, I have been wanting to get out here and plant these guys up for a couple of months now. Shame on me because what I did, and you guys are gonna die when you see what, what this actually looks like. This is not planted. This is loose and I just kind of threw it down here in this basket, but I pulled these out. I hope you guys can see it's just a root ball, a huge root ball. But these guys were planted over on the south side of our property about a year ago, and they were absolutely gorgeous. I also had them on the fronts of our cabana. They were short-lived out there. They grew probably for about, I don't know, maybe about four, three, four months I had them on the front of our cabana. They did absolutely beautiful, but I decided to go ahead and relocate them over to the south side. So these guys I've had for about two, about two years now, and they are absolutely gorgeous. These are a variegated, they have the variegated leaves and they're a hot pink and they are absolutely gorgeous. But this is a beautiful time of year for us to be planting things much like this. Even though bougainvillea um, are very warm, tropical, um, type plants. They are shrubs, trees, or whatever you want to call them. You can grow them in containers. You can grow them in the landscape. They are extremely, extremely versatile. And that's something that I learned um, after just years and years of growing them. Um, and if you guys want to know a little bit more about the bougainvillea, I go into much more detail in an earlier video. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and pop that link. As a matter of fact, I'm going to see if I can't Put the tag and see if it's if it's here. I want to say it's to you guys is right. <laughs> There's going to be a little tag up there, and hopefully it should take you to the uh, the video where I actually talk a lot in depth about the bougainvillea. And while I'm on that subject, um, I've been busted a couple of times for my pronunciation, and I'm really sorry. I grew up with um, as a young girl learning to pronounce it as bougainvillea. I, that's just the way I've always pronounced it, and I have heard it pronounced so many different ways. Bougainvillea, 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 Bougainvillea. And so it's like, I'm just for, just because I, I just had to throw it out there because I thought it was really funny when you guys bust me. From this point forward, I'm just going to be it's pronouncing it bougainvillea that's that's just kind of the way i grew up doing it so i'm really sorry if that offends you and i hope that it doesn't either way you look at it no matter how you spell it how you pronounce or not spell it but how you pronounce it these guys are gorgeous they come in lots of different colors i love them in the the beautiful gold color they come in bright red they come in coral they come in pinks light and dark and again the variegated leaf i am into like all this beautiful foliage color i love flowers I will always put flowers in my garden, but living here in South Florida, we can grow a lot of beautiful, beautiful things pretty much year round. And I love to be able to incorporate with my flowers, the texture and the, um, the different, uh, foliage color. And I, I'm just, I'm, I'm digging it for, for no pun intended. Um, but I actually, I, I'm just totally digging and I love it. So I am going to take this, this root ball that it's been just kind of, I took it out. Like I said, it's been sitting out for, I bet a month it's been sitting out over on the south side of the property since I took them out of those baskets over there and uh, so now they are ready to be planted I went and I just I cut them all back to where they're nice and um, you know nice and compact again and ready to just get started again and again let me see if I can show you guys a better I idea of this root ball um, like I said, I just, I took it out of the basket over there, knocked a little bit of the dirt off the bottom of it. And like I said, these guys I've had, I know all of two years. I think I got these back in, I want to say late, you know, maybe the, the, like the late summer, um, at a garden center here, uh, locally, um, and I want to say it was like at the end of 2000 or, or the summer of like 2019. So I've had them for a while. And all I do is I just keep putting them in these large baskets. And when they just get, you know, huge, you know, of course, obviously I trim on them. I nip and tuck them, you know, because that encourages blooming. But um, what I do is when they just start getting to the point where they get like root bound and they will because they grow very, very rapidly. Um, I just go ahead and I 
take them out. I knock about, I don't know, probably about a quarter of the root ball off and I just restart them and they come back and they look gorgeous time and time and time again. So anyway, I'm not sure how, you know, you guys do it with your, um, with your bougainvilleas, but the way like I said, the way my experience is, I've just been taking them and, and on, honestly, you guys, growing them in the ground is obviously vastly different than growing them in baskets because when they go in the ground, these guys get huge. I mean huge. They'll grow up a wall. They'll take over. They, I wouldn't necessarily call them invasive, but they definitely, definitely will take over. And my husband is threatened with me within inches of my life to not really put him directly into the, um, the landscape anymore because unless you have like a gardener or you're out there and you are nipping and tucking on them or, or I shouldn't even say nipping and tucking on them in a container you can do. Nipping and tucking on them when they're in the ground, no, not so much. You're going to want to actually prune or shear them back, um, you know, probably about four times a year, easy, when they're in the landscape because they do grow quite, quite fast. And they're, uh, they're not just their shoots, but their stems. I mean, they grow out and they have the biggest, biggest thorns on them. The, I call them pickers, but they're, they're thorns. And they will tear you up. When you, even if you're wearing gloves, those thorns will go right through those gloves. So again, Growing them in containers has just been, it's opened up a world of opportunity for me because I love them. They give just an enormous amount of color. I mean, one would think that they would give a lot of color to us in the summer months. And really and truly, living here in South Florida, we get our best beauty from these bougainvilleas during the, um, during the fall, the winter, and then the early spring. Don't get me wrong, they will still grow beautifully for us in the summer months, but they don't seem to be as, as, um, prolific bloomer, bloomers in the dead of the summer. Um, they go right through the summer. They take our heat, but they grow, uh, they bloom much more, or at least in my experience, they, they are a much more, um, they bloom so much nicer when we go into our winter and our um, our spring months or whatever. They're just, they're, they're glorious. They're absolutely gl glorious. And I love it when we drive out like on our golf beaches, we'll drive down a uh, golf drive and uh, you'll see just like, you know, the condos out there and even some homes or whatever, villas and stuff they'll have, or the hotels or whatever, they'll have them growing up like the walls and you'll be driving. It'll be a gorgeous, gorgeous winter day. You know, it's about, you know, 65 degrees, 70 degrees out or whatever and you're driving out there on the golf by the golf beaches and you just see, see these things just lining the streets out there and they're just absolutely beautiful in the winter months so anyway um, again if you want to see more um, or, or hear more about the bougainvillea and a little bit more about you know its growth patterns and uh, just more in depth about this uh, this particular magnificent plant definitely catch that video because I go into like I said much more depth but in this video, we are gonna be taking this one and I have another one that's sitting over on the other side and I'll show that to you in a minute. It looks much like this other than it's just a little smaller. I had to uh, nip and tuck at it a little bit more. Um, it just was um, just a difference in size. That's all the, the, the difference was. But I'm gonna be planting these now along this. I'm over here on the uh, the north side of our property. Been doing a lot, a lot of work over here and I'm real anxious to show you, you know, in, in future videos, um, you know, what we've accomplished over here and what we have left to do but I do have these uh, these baskets is a 20 inch basket there are three of them along this fence line over here and I'm going to be putting in two of this really pretty it's like a lipstick pink I guess is what you call it it's just really really pretty and actually when they're when they're full on in their bloom they almost take on like a little the throat takes on almost like a little fuchsia it's like just really deep absolutely beautiful along with these variegated leaves so I will plant this color with the variegated leaves on the two end pots and in the center I have just a uh, just a solid color green leaf with bright bright red uh, blooms so I thought it would look really really pretty with having the red in the center and then it's like a pinky red actually but the, the pinky red in the center and then the two hot pinks that are on um, or I should say hot pinks fuchsia pink lipstick pink whatever you want to call it um, a little bit of a lighter pink um, on either end so let's go ahead and get these guys planted and uh, we'll come back and take a look
Oh, man. Crap. <laughs> well, well, well. <sighs> okay, did you catch that mis mishap? I was just a little too rough. If you were uh, watching me plant this, you saw that I was doing it a little crudely by just kind of dumping in my uh, my um, potting soil, actually, just kind of like right over top. These, these bougainvilleas are just absolutely so resilient that I'm just a little rough with them. And so I just kind of dumped this potting mix just kind of, you know, right over top of it and just kind of was beating the sides of the basket. And I should have known better, primarily because it wasn't the plant that was of concern with me, but these chains, I've had these baskets for a number of years now. And of course the chain is actually starting to, to actually rot. So I do have new chain. So I'm gonna go run and grab myself a couple of new chains and we're gonna go ahead and put the chains on here and we will regain, <laughs> regain this video with it hanging back up where it belongs. So hold on one second, I'm gonna go grab that chain. Voila, all done. These chains, after so many seasons, you know, they're out exposed to the elements, they will rust. And that one just happened to give, like I said, I probably, I probably egged that one on because I was just beating on the side of the basket and I was just kind of doing this little number, trying to get this soil down inside of this uh, basket. But you guys, um, again, like I said, it was a little crude, just kind of, normally I do not do that. I don't just dump it over top of the plant like that. But like I said, these, these bougainvilleas, these, they are so tough. These are the I really really super tough plants and this guy I've been working with this this guy for like I said at least two years now and um, he's just taken off every single time that I have transplanted him and um, so I, I didn't think I was gonna do any damage but again I broke the chain but no big deal we replaced it and now I've got fresh uh, good um, organic potting mix down inside of there for this guy to take off. What I'm going to do is I'm going to wait a little closer probably even though our temperatures are you know pretty warm. This guy I'm going to wait probably close to the end of February before I start giving him a little fertilizer because usually I fertilize probably this um, well this because this is a shrub this is definitely like a shrub and um, I'll probably fertilize him about four times a year and then maybe in between it just depends I may because um, it really depends. With, bougainvillea, with bougainvillea, the bougainvillea, you don't generally have to do too much by the way of like bloom boosters and stuff. If you give them a good fertilizer that is designed for uh, the bougainvillea, you will absolutely um, have no problem getting it to um, to bloom. They they just they bloom actually even if you don't fertilize them. Um, as long as you're you know you're clipping them and everything, um, you can usually get them to bloom. Um, at least in my experience, you can usually get them to bloom. But again, I digress. Um, I'm going to go ahead and probably add some fertilizer that's designed for this baby. Uh, uh, probably closer, like I said, it'll probably be closer to the end of February. That way, just in case Mother Nature decides she's going to throw a little bit of, a bit of a fit um, and, you know, her temperatures dip, dip down again, you know, into the upper 40s and 50s or whatever. Um, or, you know, gosh, even a couple weeks ago we had, you know, they were down in the upper, upper 30s and, you know, and lower 40s um, in the evening time. And, you know, things don't grow. Our tropicals just, you know, they... Obviously, they, they kind of just go stationary and they don't really grow. So putting fertilizer on them a little too soon, I, I, it's, it doesn't, I don't really need to do that. So anyway, you guys, I'm going to go and I'm going to plant up um, the other three. Um, my only thing is that I don't have a 20-inch basket for the very end. I thought I had one and I don't. I think that basket, I think all the sides rusted um, on that particular one that I had. I do have three over on the south side of the property, but those are all spoken for because I'm probably going to be putting some bougainvillea in, in those as well. And then of course, um, I've got this one, the middle one, I'm going to take you over and show you that one really quick. And then um, the third one, I'm going to have to go ahead and purchase that. But let me go ahead and walk you over and show you this, um, the, the pretty colored uh, red, that corally red or pinky red um, in the center. So let's walk over there and I'll show you that. Okay, so here is the basket that's in the center. We were just over here, and then this is the one that's in the center. And as you can see, I've got um, I've got this beautiful color. It's a solid. These are just solid color. These are actually still in their nursery cans. Let me 
let me do this. These are still in their nursery cans, but I've got three of them here that I'm going to be going ahead and putting down inside of here to give it a nice good start. And that's how this one started over here as well. They were, I believe there were three of them in that one as well that just kind of all bonded together, you know, over the last two years because they grew together or whatever. They formed one, you know, nice solid root ball. But anyway, these are beautiful. They're ready to be uh, potted up. And I'm going to do the same thing. It's just, they're so beautiful. You can see, I'll bring this in a little bit closer, but you can see just how beautiful. Like I said, it looks to me more like a, um, like a pinky red. So they should just blend so beautifully. And then with that solid color, I think it'll look absolutely gorgeous over here. So I'm going to go ahead and get those all potted up and then, um, add some soil. I'm going to be a little more careful with the way I put, you know, at, at the way I, well, I'll probably just dump it in like I did, but I'm going to be a little bit more careful so that these change. I think, you know, this chain's a little bit older too. It doesn't look quite as rusted as the other one, but we just want to make sure we don't go through chains, you know, too quickly if we don't have to. So I'm going to go ahead and get this one potted up. Okay, here's number two. This is the center one that I was working on, obviously. And um, I was a little more careful with these because these are brand new. The one that I was planting earlier, the first one, um, like I said, I, I was dumping that, <laughs> that potting soil just like you know, clopping it right over the top. I was a little bit more careful with this, with these guys, because again, these are, are brand new in the nursery cans. That was a little bit more, that's a lot more resilient because I've jerked them out, you know, multiple times out of, uh, out of uh, pots or containers, I should say. So I was a bit a little more rough with him. But anyway, this is very beautiful, uh, fresh potting soil. I put three of them in here and I believe those were like the little one, uh, one gallon cans. And um, these will all eventually just merge together and form one root ball. Let me go ahead and show you um, the third one where it's going to go. It's right, There's not a basket there yet, but that's the one that I've got to buy and show you what the other one actually looks like. That is the matching one to the first one. So let me grab that one. Okay, here is the other one that matches the one, the first one that we did. As you can see, it's a little bit smaller, but I've got a couple of little like, you know, sticks. Uh, they're not dead. Um, I'm just gonna go ahead and nip them. There's still a lot of like green. And so I'm just gonna go ahead and this one I could probably just pop right off or whatever, but there's still green down in there, but I'm gonna go ahead and just, you know, make it to where it's nice and dense because you can see how full. If I bring this a little bit closer, look at how full and dense that is down inside. And so that is some good stock right there. Um, I'll put this in some fresh soil. Like I said, this guy, um, they've been sitting out, I know, all plus 30 plus days. And um, I've just been keeping them watered. So they have got to get into um, the uh, some fresh soil. I don't recommend anybody do this. This is kind of a crude way of gardening or whatever, but I just um, I just didn't have the time and I didn't have, um, you know, what I needed to get these in um, these baskets. So anyway, um, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to go to probably the Home Depot and grab another basket uh, that matches these other. They're the 20 inch baskets. I'm going to line it. And I forgot to tell you guys, these baskets I'm lining with that weed barrier liner. It's something that I've been doing. I started about a year ago, maybe a little bit longer. Gosh, time gets away from us, doesn't it? But it's maybe about a year, year and a half ago, I started lining my baskets instead of with the core liner. And I, I still do use the core liners, but I've been using those um, weed barriers. And I got to tell you, I'm really loving it. I'm not having um, any problem. I mean, the water flows right through them because, you know, with a weed barrier, the water Water still has to penetrate and um, you know they're holding the soil beautifully and they're not rotting so you know I'm getting a little more bang for my buck so I'm gonna keep using them I will use the core liners you know as well from time to time too but um, I'm gonna get some more of I'm afraid I think I still have a little bit of that liner left because a little bit goes a long way I think I had like 50 foot of it so anyway I'm off to Home Depot to grab myself another 20 inch basket gonna get this bad boy all planted and we're gonna have beautiful buggies over on this side and of course I'm gonna update you guys you know as 
to what they look like. And uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you got some inspiration. We're, you know, rounding the end of February. Um, of course, we live here in South Florida, so our growing season is, um, you know, Kind of, kind of, sort of all year round. But for those of you who live in the northern uh, climates or whatever, um, you know, hold on. Uh, your snow is going to be ending pretty soon, hopefully, and you guys are going to be able to get out and, uh, you know, get to doing some uh, beautiful gardening. And I look forward to seeing all of your videos too. So, anyway, you guys, until the next video, bye.